Welcome to a new episode in our program, uh, God's Revelation. And with us, as usual, His Grace Bishop Yusuf. And we'll continue, uh, continue the same seals which we were talking about last time. We talked in the last episode about four seals. And now we are coming to the fifth, uh, fifth seal. And we'll see His Grace what is uh, interpretation of the fifth uh, seal because he is mainly talking about those who are the souls under the altar. If we remember the second, third, and fourth seal, there was a persecution on the church. Second seal uh, from the Roman Empire, third seal from the heretics from the church, fourth seal from heretics from outside the church, who attack the divinity of Christ. So here actually in the fifth seal, like the camera was taken from earth to heaven or to the paradise. In order to tell us about those who were killed because of their faith in Christ. That's why in the fifth seal he says, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So all the souls of the martyrs, starting from the beginning of Christianity until actually the end of the ages. So they cried and they said, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So there is a desire to, for those martyrs to see the justice of God and how, because their martyrdom was very, very unfair. So they are longing to see the justice of God. That's why they called God holy and true. And here, God comforted them. That's why when we pray in the litany for the departed and say, repose the souls of the departed, the word repose means give them peace, give them comfort. And here we can see how they were comforted. A white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. So the white robes means their purity, their innocence, their glory, the crown of martyrdom that they will receive in the kingdom of heaven, in the eternal life. And they, God comforted them that there is one day God will actually uh, repay each one according to his deeds. As we say in the divine liturgy, and he appointed a day for recompense in which he would appear to judge the world in righteousness and give each one according to his deeds. But he told them, I am not blind to the injustice on earth. But there will be a time in which this justice will be fulfilled. But now there are many people still will be killed for the name of Christ. So just wait until your fellow servants and your brethren will be completed as, as you, uh, completed in their uh, struggle. So this actually a comforting message from heaven. Many times when we see injustice on earth, unfairness, people are killed, people are persecuted just because of their faith. We become also very eager to, to, to see the justice. Why God you allow this? Where are you God? But the response to these martyrs, not only comforting them, but comforting us also who are still on earth, to know that there is a day in which each one will be repaid for his own deeds, whether good or evil. But th those uh, martyrs could be also included with them saints or martyrs only? I'm sure the saints have the same zeal to see the justice of God, because maybe they did not suffer literal killing, but 
they can be uh, killed psychologically or uh, like, like we call character assassination when they exile, like St. John, for example. St. John was not uh, martyred, but he was exiled. He lived, uh, he lived all his life under persecution. His character was like assassinated uh, by the Roman uh, emperor. So I am sure this cry in heaven did not come only from those who were martyred, but from every single person in the paradise of joy who are longing to see the uh, justice of God. And it's interesting here that he saw them under the altar. And there is actually in the first church, the, the tradition is to put the relics of the martyrs under uh, the altar based on, uh, on this vision. Yes. And the altar represent, uh, why under the altar? Because altar represents sacrifice. We, we consider the, the cross an altar on which Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice. So because they were offered as a sacrifice, they were martyrs, that's why St. John saw them under the altar. So altar represents they are people who literally offered their life as a sacrifice. Is it uh, also wondered that uh, how come that uh, martyrs who are full of forgiveness to ask for revenge? They are asking for the justice of God. And salvation is given freely to everyone. So those who deny salvation, and not only they reject salvation for themselves, but also they persecute those who are pursuing their own salvation and trying to prevent them from obtaining this salvation. It is fair, it is befitting, it is right to get uh, punished uh, for what they did. Because God is com complete and comprehensive in all his attributes. He is merciful, but also he is a just God. If we remove the justice from God, then he is not a true God, not the true God. So even these martyrs, yes, they are full of forgiveness, and they, they forgive these people for what they did for them. But these people need to repent. But if they are taking advantage of the forgiveness, and they are still attacking the kingdom of God on earth here, then they, are, they deserve actually to be punished. Otherwise, where is the justice of God? Maybe also the martyrs, they are asking that it's enough, Lord, enough of those, uh, their brethren the, here on earth still under attack. Yes. So they're asking. Uh, yes. And this is the, will remind us nowadays that uh, people always saying, if we say the, about any sin, it's against God. We say this is a sin. They said, don't judge, don't judge. So. We are not judging the person, but we are judging the sin itself. Exactly. Yeah, because of that, even God in his justice has to judge the sin yeah. and the sinner. Can you imagine any country that the law in this country is only forgiveness and there is no consequences or punishment for any criminal? BMS. Exactly. Mm. Th that's why as we say in the book of Psalms, mercy and justice have kissed each other. Mercy will not be a true mercy if there is no justice. Mm. That, that's why there is no contradiction between forgiveness and mercy and asking for the justice of God. So now we came to the sixth seal which is uh, kind of like the end of the world because uh, uh, it's, there is earthquakes and stuff like that. Can you tell us something about the seal? Uh, as I said, the first four seals, uh, if you imagine there is a camera, it was on earth. Fifth seal, the camera went to the paradise. Then the camera came 
back to earth to explain to us the situation of the people who rejected God, who did not believe in God. Now we know those who are martyred, how they look like in, in the paradise of joy. Mm. So people here on earth who are not believers, how they look like. So the sixth seal, there was earthquake. So the earthquake means all the heresies and persecution that's attacking the church. And, and as your reverence said, this will increase at the end of the world. Yeah, from the time of Christ until the end of the world and the great tribulation, all these persecution and attacks exist. But the frequency and the power of this attack will increase at the end of the world. Mm. You know. So what will happen with this earthquake that uh, attacking the church? The sun became black. The sun represent Christ. So in the mind of many people, they are blind uh, as if they don't see the sun. Mm. As in it became black to them. They, like right now, they deny the existence of God. They became atheists. They, they say Christ was just a regular historical figure and nothing else. They, they deny his divinity. And some people actually even they deny that this figure is a historical figure. They say the history has nothing about, about Christ. So that is how the sun became black and the moon became like a blood. Moon represents the church because the moon reflects the light of the sun to the earth. So the moon usually represents the church. And here the church became like a blood because of the persecution and attacks, you know. So the church, especially at the end of the time, will face great, great persecution, like the, the, the early century. Hmm. Maybe more than Or the maybe more, yeah. exactly, hmm. maybe more. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. The stars of heaven, again, will see leaders in the church, prominent people in the church. Now they are falling down. Mm. Uh, they, uh, they will deny Christ. Or maybe they will alter the, the doctrine and the teaching in order to please the people. Uh, for example, people ask for same-sex marriage. So they will approve it for them. These are prominent stars who will fall down. They approve transgenderism. They will not contradict abortion. They, they will approve abortion. Divorce will be easy. Not as the Bible teaches us, no divorce except for sexual immorality. So all these things actually mean the stars of heaven uh, fell to the earth. And he gave a, a beautiful example here. As the fig tree drops, it's late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. A strong fruit will not fall with wind, but a weak one or the one that's dying. Mm. In the same way, those who are weak or those who are not uh, nourished by the word of God, they will fall down by this wind and earthquake that's attacking uh, the church. And then it says, then the sky receded as a scroll when it's rolled up. Every mountain and island was moved out of its place. It again represents doubts in faith. Uh, how everyone actually is shaken. The children of God, those who trust God, like mountain, as we read in the book of Psalms, those who trust in the Lord, like mountain of Zion. So these mountains will be uh, shaken pulled from its place because, again, of the severity of the persecution. But as the Lord said, unless God shortens these days, no one will be saved. But mm -hmm. for the sake of the elect, God will shorten these days. And we'll see here 
the kings of the earth and the great men and rich men and commanders, uh, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in caves and, and rocks. That is the final judgment when they see Christ coming on, on his throne to judge the world in righteousness, then actually they will try to hide and they will ask the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. So this again, the final judgment, when God come to judge the world and how all these people will be shaken. Uh, those who rejected him on earth, now in the day of judgment, they will be very, very fearful and very afraid because it's time of wrath. It is time of, of judgment in which God will judge each one according to his uh, deeds. But do you think it will be literal? I mean, when they, when they see Christ, it will be momental or it will be really they will hide themselves in the... You know, in, in, um, in prophecies in general, we don't know exactly the literal application of this prophecy, but to understand the spirit of it. But when it happens, uh, the prophecy, uh, when it happens, or when it fulfills, it will be clearer to our mind whether uh, every word here will, will be done literally or just in a prophetic way. I see. Thank you, Sayyidina, for uh, uh, this uh, uh, very, very rich uh, episode, and we'll uh, continue next, uh, God willing, soon with uh, a new episode. So just tune in and wait for us uh, for a new episode with God's uh, revelations.